the Eagles. And the home team, the Grand View Prep Pride. Today's game is being streamed live on FHSAA Sports.com. Call our text friends and family to check out FHSAA Sports.com for the live stream. Find out how to order a DVD copy of the game. In the spirit of sportsmanship, we ask all fans to act responsibly and courteously to those around you. Use of language or disorderly conduct is unacceptable and unwelcome at the FHSAA Finals. Let's afford the student-athletes, the coaches, the officials, and your fellow fans the respect they deserve. Your cooperation is appreciated. At this time, would you please rise, gentlemen, remove your hats. For the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag, followed by our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, please welcome Dallas Elwell from Ovations Food Services, who honors America today with her performance of our national anthem. Oh, can you see? Coach of the Eagles is Michael DeBose. 
And for the prize, Joe Dawson. Your officials from Shawnee Gainesville, Saul Spites, John Luke Salas, and John Sowers. First quarter starts right now. Hi, good afternoon. We welcome you back to the Lakeland Center as we move to the 2A semifinals of the 2013 FHSAA Boys Basketball Finals. And our game, our first 2A semifinal today, the North Florida Educational Institute Eagles out of Jacksonville and the Grandview Prep Pride. <laughs> And, Blue Devils uh, and Hornets in the last game. That was the last game. It's okay, guys. <laughs> but no, it is the Grandview Prep Pride out of Boca Raton. Grandview Prep 28-2, North Florida Educational Institute 24-6. 10-22, though, officially. 24-6 on the court. They forfeited 16 games this year due to an eligible player. They're making their first appearance in the finals and only their second year as a school of Grandview Prep. Uh, they're regulars here <laughs> in Lakeland as well. Yeah, to say the least. Marty Palmer along with Mike right out. Grandview Prep in the white uniforms as Grandview Prep has been in the Final Four the last, this is their seventh year in a row, by the way. State runners up in 08, 09, and 12. Pardon me, in 11, runner up last, Final Four last year as Grandview Prep gets a three for Eric Nance, Mance, who hits the three starting lineup for the Grandview Prep Pride, coached by Joe Dawson, number one, Ivan Kinnett, number five, Jawan Frazier, number 24, Sean Walsh, number 33, Alex Jones, and number 35, Eric Mance. And for North Florida Educational Institute in the red uniforms with the blue letters and numerals, white trim. There's a pass inside. And a layup for Eric Cobb. Eric Cobb, a sophomore, number zero. Number one, junior Terrell Miller. Number two, D'Angelo Stephen Bell. Number five, junior Malik Carter. And number 41, freshman Sammy Battle, as you would expect. As underneath, had it taken away, North Florida Educational Institute. Um, only one senior, that's D'Angelo Stephen Bell. A lot of younger guys and no one shorter than 6'2". Yeah, that's the between. thing that jumps out first is their their size. As you mentioned, the shortest guy is 6'2", but they've got 6'8", 6'9", in Miller and Cobb, and then Battle at 6'5", in the starting lineup as well. Pass inside, that is Sammy Battle, the freshman at the free throw line. Jumper rolls in for Terrell Miller, and it's a 4-3 lead. For North Florida Educational Institute, or NIFI, <laughs> Mike and I know them in the Jacksonville area. Three-pointer the other side for Grandview. That's an air ball by Eric Mance. By the way, here's the road to Lakeland for these two teams. It was pretty uh, you know, nice pass and trailing in and scoring was Miller. Pretty easy road for North Florida Educational Institute. They beat Escambia Charter 70 to 19. Temple Christian from Jacksonville 86-45. And their closest game was First Academy of Leesburg on the road, which they beat 83-53 in the regional final to advance to Lakeland for the first time. And for Grandview Prep, uh, they uh, defeated Pine School of Hope Sound 75-36, Lake Worth Christian 88-66, and then First Baptist of Naples only by three, 49-46 to advance to Lakeland. 6-3 the lead for North Florida Educational Institute. The school, by the way, run by Stacy Poole. He's the headmaster there, former Florida Gator, whose sons played at Providence and Terry Parker. Three-point shot, no good. And here's North Florida Educational on the run out. Cross-court pass to Stephen Bell. Three-pointer top of the key is short by Terrell Miller in the rebound to Grandview Prep. You know, and it should be noted that Stacy's son was playing on this team at the first part of the year, but then he left school early to go to Georgia Tech. Solomon Poole. Yeah, three-pointer in and out by Mance. Solomon Poole played at Terry Parker last year. They made it all the way to the 5A state championship game. Transferred to play for his father's school. There's a three. It's an air ball from the right wing by Eric Cobb. And you're right, was uh, actually was eligible to go to Georgia Tech, so he's playing there now. But uh, Joe Dawson, as there's a foul, and the shot will count for uh, Ivan Kinnett. Well, have a chance for a three-point play falling away. And he's the guy to watch, Ivan Kinnett, for this team. Kinnett leads his team in scoring at 24.1 points per game as a free throw shooter, pretty good free throw shooter at 83% on the season. Kinnett also averages 7.6 boards and 4.8 assists. 
Well, Eric Cobb, his first foul, first team foul. Kinnett, nice fall away. We mentioned Joe Dawson, nine years as the free throw is good. Nine years at Grandview Prep, 246-32. A graduate of Florida Southern, Lakeland, and Pope John Paul II High School in Boca Raton, 44 years old. And Final four in 07, runner-up in 08 and 09. Final four in 10, runner-up in 11, final four in 12. And back to the final four this year. Seven years in a row for Grandview Prep, still searching for that first state boys basketball title. Three left wing is in and out, no good by Battle. And the rebound goes to Kinnett. And on the other side, another contest in styles. Michael DeBose, 27, only his second year as a head coach. Graduate of the University of Christian and University of North Florida in Jackson. Here's a three. Elijah Wad Frazier. And a ninth succeed for Grandview Prep. Timeout taken. And Grandview Prep gets a delay of game. And you look at Michael DeBose, he's wearing the red sweater with the bow tie. In fact, his assistant wearing a bow tie as well. Interesting look for, that guy actually looks about 15 years old, 18 years old. Michael DeBose, a young looking guy. Yeah, he is very young looking, you're right. 27. Uh, your officials old. for today, Saul Spates is the referee. The umpires, John Sowers and John Rostalis. That uh, crew we know well, they work a lot of games in the North Central Florida area, Northeast Florida. All right, so a three point lead for the Pride. And traveling call to Malik Carter. So 3.53 to go first quarter. It's our first media timeout. Grandview Prep with a couple of threes early on and a three-point play. And they lead North Florida Educational Institute by a score of 9-6. to 3.53 to go first quarter. You mentioned uh, the numbers we had. Terrell Miller averages 22.7 a game and 10.3 rebounds for the Eagles at North Florida Educational Institute. D'Angelo Stephen Bell at 13.3 points, 5.3 assists. Malik Carter 15.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, 6 assists per game. And Eric Cobb averages 12.5 points, 10 rebounds a game for the Eagles and for Grandview Prep. Ivan Kinnett, 24 points a game, averages seven and a half rebounds. Eric Mance at 16 and a half points a game. The other league scored double figures is Sean Walsh, who averages 11.3, and Alex Jones has 7.3 rebounds a game as well. And leader in assists is Kinnett at 4.8 a game. So uh, again, it's an interesting matchup because Grandview Prep, you know, they're no stranger to Lakeland and North Florida Educational Institute just started two years ago. And to add to the rebounds that you were talking about for North Florida Educational Institute, it's no surprise that their 6'8 and 6'9 guys are averaging a, you know, a double-double. But their third leading rebounder is Malik Carter, who is the guy, at, the smallest guy at 6'2. He averages seven rebounds a game. Three from the right corner, no good by Mance again, who's shooting a lot early on. Here's Stephen Bell heading the other way. He missed the layup underneath, rebounded again by Eric Mance. Here's Grandview Prep on the run out. This is Juwan Frazier, point guard. Across to Walsh, now on the left corner to Kinnett. Kinnett back to Walsh, swings it around. And on it's a back to Walsh, left wing. Now cross court pass to Mance for three. Got it again, he's wide open. A couple of threes for Mance. And it's 12-6, a six point lead for Granby Prep. Mance shoots 42% beyond the arc. He's second on the team, averaging 16 a game. He's got the third three of the quarter for the Pride. And they now have doubled up. North Florida Educational, 12-6. There's Stephen Bell, top of the key. Three-point try again. No good back rim by Carter. But the rebound underneath by Miller. Miller drives in and Terrell Miller is fouled. And he's going to shoot two. One of the first foul of the game on Grandview Prep with 2.42 to go in the first quarter. And that will be on... Alex Jones his Alex first Jones well coming up at four o'clock our second 2A semifinal Miami Westwood Christian and Orlando Christian Prep who's won four of the last five state championships <laughs> in 2A as Miller rolls in the free throw that'll <clears throat> the winner of this game will play the winner of that game tomorrow the 2A championship at 805 our 1A championship game tomorrow at 435 is said it will be a all pay to handle battle Holmes County and West Gadsden. West Gadsden defeating Union County 76-51 in our early game. And then Holmes County holding off Hawthorne 51-48 in our second 1A semifinals. Miller hits both. He has six points. And North Florida Education down 4-12-8. There's Kinnett being guarded by Battle. They only have nine players listed on the North Florida Educational roster, so they don't go very deep. As driving and scoring again is Ivan Kinnett. He has five. 
And it's again a six point lead for Ramsey Prep, 14-8. Yeah, that's, if you look at it, their numbers, sorry to interrupt you there, Mike, they really only have seven guys with stats <laughs> of those guys. A couple of freshmen averaging zero points a game as well. Yeah, not only are they not a deep team, but also they only played in their second year of district play this year. The net on the run out ahead and laying it in kind of awkwardly. The shot wall, nice pass by Canetto to miss, and now it's 16-8 Grandview Prep. Here's Miller for three right wing. No good, back rim. Loose ball, Cobb with a rebound. Cobb now gets a double team, tries to go up, had it knocked away. And three seconds to call on North Florida Educational Institute. So a turnover, that is their second. Last basket by Sean Walsh, Walsh excuse me, his first of the game. He averages 11.3. They have three players that average in double figures, led by Kinnett. Kinnett with five and Mance with six right now. Mance is second on the team in scoring. Reed top of the key is good by Kinnett. He's got eight in timeout. North Florida Educational down 11, 19 to eight. What a start for Granby Prep. They're shooting 56%, seven of 12, or four of nine for three point range. Cadets hit two of them, or one of them. Mance is hit two, and they have an 11 point lead. It's a team that shoots very well behind the arc. As a team, they shoot 43% beyond the arc. Cadet and Walsh both shoot 46% beyond the arc. And Walsh, 46 of 100 on the year. Jacob Schnurr uh, also 38 of 100 coming off the bench. Kinnett 28 of 61 and Mance 26 of 62 and 42%. So yeah, they, they do shoot very well in three point range and they'll have those stats on the other side for the Eagles. Again, the Eagles of North Florida Educational Institute, the record is 24 and six, but they had to forfeit 16 games due to an eligible player during the season. So their actual record coming in is 10 and 22 officially. They're 24 and six on the court this season. And driving in underneath the battle, the shot was blocked by Wendell Linton. But now a loose ball on the floor, Cobb had it. Now it's back on the floor. And then out of bounds will stay with North Florida Educational Institute last minute of the first quarter. And you look at their season, by the way. Yeah. How about some of these teams they beat? They beat Arlington Country Day the first game of the season. They're nationally ranked, yep. That two no good by Miller. Rebound fought for and will have a foul on the rebound as Clint is fouled by Malik Carter. That's his first, second team foul on the Eagles. And yeah, you know, they beat Miami Norland by 13. They're in the 6A semis. They lost to Montverde by five, but so does everyone else. Well, Montverde ranked number two in the country. They beat Community School by 20. They're in the 3A semifinals tomorrow. They defeated um, Potter's House, who's another good team from the Jacksonville area, by six. They lost to the Rock of Gainesville by six. So there's another team that may be nationally ranked now. And they lost Arlington Country Day by 20 at the end of the year, but they beat them early in the season. There's a missed shot. Now here comes Carter the other way. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Stephen Bell inside, and Miller is fouled. Can't get the shot to go, but he will go back to the line to shoot two. You know, kind of compounding the problem for the Eagles. I mentioned just their second year in district play. They won the district title last year, but... You know, this is a team that lost eight players to graduation, so that kind of wiped out any chance they had of, uh, you know, rebuilding for this coming up season. At the line is Miller. He has six points, and he misses the first short. And you mentioned last year they made it to the regional semifinals a year ago. Or, pardon me, regional final. They were district champs this year. Here were their scores in the district tournament. 71-12, 81-37, 69-37. In the regional tournament, <laughs> 70 to 19, 70 to 19, mm. 86 to 45, and 83 to 53. And so that comes out to an average of about, let's see, 41 points a game in the regional. But they're down 10 here as Miller hits one of two. Randy Prep really has come out on fire. Boy, they wanted a foul there, almost to push as Mance will dribble back to Kinnett. 10 seconds to go in the quarter. 10 point lead for Grandview Prep. Now six, now five. Mance being guarded there by Stefan Bell will pull up. Free throw line jump in and out, no good. Deuce Paul rebound to Cobb, and that will be the end of the first quarter. Good period, though, for the Grandview Prep ride. Joe Dawson working the official, though, wanted a foul there. 
But at the end of the first eight minutes of play here on 2A semifinal, first 2A semifinal, it's Randy Prep 19 and North Florida Educational Institute 9. We'll take a quick break, come back to Lakeland in just a moment. This is the boys 2A semifinals, the 2013 FHSA boys finals for the Lakeland Center on the FHSA Network. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. All right, welcome back to the Lakeland Center. As we get ready for the second quarter, Marty Palmer along with Mike right out here in this 2A semifinal game. And it's 19-9, Grandview Prep leading North Florida Educational Institute as this is our third of six semifinal games today here from the Lakeland Center on the FHSA Network. Grandview Prep 7 for 14, 50% shooting in the first quarter. 4 for 9 for three-point range. North Florida Education 3 of 13, 23%, 0 of 6 on three-point land. Rebounds 10-7 in favor of the Eagles. 4 to 1 on the offensive glass. Three assists, two turnovers for North Florida. Three assists, one turnover for Grandview Prep as Miller Gets the pass inside this foul. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Pretty well played first quarter, really, considering both teams only had three turnovers. And the first foul on Ivan Kinnett, third team foul. The back to the line is Miller, who's three for four there and has seven points. Miller, a 6'8 junior transfer from Arlington Country Day. He was a role player there, but he's listed as the 39th best junior in the state. Miller misses the first free throw. He leads the way with seven of the Nine points. Cobb had the other basket for the North Florida Educational Institute Eagles. And on the other side, eight points for Ivan Kinnett in the first quarter, including a three. Three for Joan Frazier, six points for Eric Manson with two threes, and two points for Sean Walsh. 19 to 10, the score. His largest lead was 11 for Granby Prep there in the first quarter. They now lead it by nine. Miller has eight points. Kinnett leading by eight points, three rebounds for. Grandview Prep and Miller with seven points, four rebounds for North Florida Educational Institute. Jalen Newsom, number zero now in the game, has a ball inside. Nice hook off the glass. Wendell Clinton, big man inside, gets his first basket. It's 21 10. No look pass inside to Miller. Boy, they are double teaming Miller and a foul. Late call as Miller had the shot partially blocked. Looks like Clinton going to pick up his first foul. It'll be Actually, on Jalen Newsom. Pardon me, on Newsom inside. So his first. Fourth team foul, so back to the line goes Miller, and there, I'll tell you, NFEI is working it inside Miller. But Grandview Prep definitely is bringing two and sometimes three guys at him. Miller hits the first free throw. He's having a busy day at the line already, where he's now five for seven. He has nine points. 21-11, ten-point lead, double digits still for Grandview Prep as number 11, Virgil Davis, the freshman, checks in for the Eagles. Second free throw is straight through, so Miller hits both. He's in double figures now with 10, and eight of those have come, or six of those have come at the free throw line. 21 12, nine point lead for Grandview Prep. You mentioned Grandview Prep seven years in a row, making it to at least the Final Four, still looking for that elusive state title. Yep, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Because three years in a row, they ran to Orlando Christian Prep, actually, two years. And one year Summit Christian, they made three championship games in a row. That was a nice fadeaway jumper by Kinnett. That puts him at double figures with 10 now. Yep, that matches Miller, but now an 11-point lead again for Grandview Prep, 23-12. This is Malik Carter, right-handed floater from way out, about 15 feet out, no good. Cobb had the rebound, then lost it, and it's controlled by Kinnett, who will have a foul in the backcourt coming up on the Eagles. It's going to be on Miller. That'll be his first. Third team foul on North Florida Educational. You know, and Joe Dawson, who's in his ninth year and has gotten him here seven straight times, he said when you look at this field and this two-way you know, semifinal matchups, he said it's the toughest since I've been here. And it usually is. That's the thing. As out comes Clinton. We've got three, or the top three teams, plus the sixth-ranked team in Westwood Christian. 
Westwood Christian. You're right, Orlando Christian Prep, who I don't even is not even the number one ranked team this year, but they won four of the last five state titles. Yeah, they're ranked second, but they're defending state champion. The number one team is the team in red right now. They're losing by 11. For the Florida Educational Institute in its first Final Four. I think I'm just going to start saying nippy because that's a lot to say at once. North Florida what are you Educational North Florida? Institute. North Florida. There that's, you go. Now I'm thinking of UNF. That's just all everything. <laughs> Whoa! Boy, a collision there. Connect in court. for the steal and instead. He got hit right in the face, I think, by Carter. Yeah, picks up the foul. First foul on Kinnett. Second, actually, on Kinnett. That's three, five team fouls now in Grandview Prep. 23-12, still the score, an 11-point lead for the Pride over North Florida. Education. We'll do that. Stephen Bell wins the point. It's not that often that you'll find a team that's been to seven straight Final Fours considered an underdog, but that's what Grandview Prep considers themselves coming in, despite all the experience of being here. Inside to Miller, and Miller traveled. Tried a right-handed hook shot, it was short. Now Grandview Prep, here's Kinnett, now with two fouls, Kinnett in the game. Here's Newsom top of the key. Nice pass, but back out, three-point try left. Corner is good by Alex Jones. Boy, they're knocking down the threes. Yeah, that is five in the first half. It's 26-12. They've more than doubled up for Ford Educational. And even Jones shoots 40% behind the arc. It's amazing. Here's Stephen Bell. Cross-court pass to Carter. Carter drives and he's fouled as he drives to the hoop. He's going to go to the line to shoot two. Malik Carter is hit the score today. In fact, Miller has 10 of their 12 points. Cobb with the other basket. That's the second foul now on Jones. So now Bramby Prep has two players with two fouls. Jones and Ivan Kinnett. So... See if Jones checks out. Has the first free throw good for Malik Carter. First point of the game for the 6-2 junior. The pride. Sean Walsh leads with 46 threes coming in. Next is Jacob Schneer, who comes off the bench. He has 38. And Mill Carter hits both, pardon me, and it's 26-14. 12-point lead for Grandview Prep. He said that... Uh, Again, this is a second year program, so a lot of these guys, probably all of them are transfers almost. Three from the corner as he's falling down, almost went for Sean Walsh. Here comes North Florida Educational on the run out the other way. Stephen Bell now two. No, they gave him a three. Line. Oh, pardon me, is it three? Angel Davis coming off the bench, just like that. It's a nine point lead, and now a double dribble. A little bit of confusion on the Grandview Prep side. You see there to the left of your screen, now off the screen, Michael DeBose wearing the sporting the bow tie. So as they mentioned that earlier, the red <laughs> sweater wearing the colors of the school with the bow tie. And his assistant, one of his coaches sitting on the table wearing it as well. So North Florida Education without nine now. Here's Cobb back inside the Miller inside the free throw line. Turn around, back out. Three-pointer left corner is no good that time by Carter. Loose ball rebound to Miller. Miller right into hook is good. Another offensive rebound and Miller has 12. Now it's a seven-point game, 26-19. 7-0 run for the Eagles. Nice pass to Glinton who bobbled it and then was able to put it in. Good assist there for Javon Frazier. Window Glinton has four. It's back to a nine-point lead. 3.30 now to go. Second quarter. Stephen Bell again running the point into Miller. Back out to Stephen Bell. Three right wing, no good. Back rim rebounded underneath by Kinnett. Now on the run. It's a two on one. Cross court pass now back to Walsh. He'll go cross court. Almost picked off there. Gets it to Kinnett somehow. Frazier then back to Walsh. And Frazier again. And then it's tipped in. That will go out of bounds to stay with Grandview Prep. That'll lead us to our media timeout. 3.09 to go, second quarter. They haven't seemed to figure that out yet, but it is. There it is. Grandview Prep 28 and North Florida Educational Institute 19. This is a 2A semifinal matchup here from the Lakeland Center on the FHSAA Network. And coming up tonight, after our 2A semifinal, we'll move over to 4A. 
got a chance early tonight to see Joel Berry. Yeah, two of the best cars. Not only Joel Berry defending Mr. Prep. Basketball, but Ransom Everglades, who, by the way, Alonzo Morning Sun plays for them. But Sam Singer. Why doesn't he play for Alonzo Morning High School? <laughs> right. uh, Sam Singer is the guy to keep your yeah. eyes on, though, for Ransom Everglades. He averages almost 27 a game, over 10 rebounds, and almost seven assists a game. And coming up tonight at 8.30, It'll be the second of the Gadsdens today. The West Gadsden played this morning in 1A, won their semifinal matchup. They'll be in the championship game tomorrow. Tonight, East Gadsden from Havana will take on Boca Raton St. Andrews at 8.30 in the second 4A semifinal. And we'll get it all started again tomorrow at noon with the 3A semifinals. Jacksonville Providence and Community School of Naples at 1.30. Fort Melbourne, Fort Aaron, Pearl Springs Christian. And then the championship games tomorrow, 1A at 4.35 between West Gaston and Holmes County and then the 2A championship tomorrow night at 8.05. Grandview prep up nine, they get the ball back to after the timeout. And That's an offensive, offensive foul. foul. Yeah, Frazier called, pretty obvious foul there. That'll be his first eighth, or pardon me, one, two, three, four, seventh team foul on the Pride who are shooting 55%, 11 for 20, only two turnovers. North Florida Educational, 5 of 18 at 28%. They've only committed three turnovers. Rebounds 13-9 in favor of the Eagles. 5-1 offensive glass, but Andrew Prep also shooting 5 for 11 from three-point range in the first half. Big difference in this nine-point lead. Marty, I know you mentioned the youth of uh, in North Florida. Grandview Prep has four other five seniors in the starting lineup. Frazier, who just committed the foul, is just a freshman. Yeah, they really are, and the Pride younger team as well. Put back there by Carter is good off the miss for Miller. He has four, and now it's a seven-point lead again for Grandview Prep 28-21. Here is Eric Mance. Now off to Kinnett. Kinnett drives, had it blocked. Kinnett gets it back, had it knocked away again, and going to stay with Grandview Prep. Michael DeBose tried to say the ball was bobbled it off the gravy prep player, but that will not be the call. So Walsh throws it inbounds to Kinnett. Kinnett will have a fadeaway, two that's good for the corner. <laughs> See the bell at a look on his face like, what do I gotta do for this guy? He's got 12, and it's 30 to 21, nine point lead, two minutes to go in the half. Kinnett shoots 55% from two point land. Stephen Bell to battle into the corner to Carter inside and Cobb driving the baseline pulls it back out to Carter top of the key Carter drives up and under nice move and lays it in Ooh, that was a pretty move by Malik Carter he's got six and again it's a seven point lead for the Grandview Prep Pride 30 to 23. Well, the Pride will slow it down a little bit but Eric Mance at the point there comes Mance driving, pull up no good, but he is fouled and he'll shoot two. Mance had two threes early, hasn't scored since, because but he picks up the foul as the foul goes on Eric Cobb, his second, fourth team foul on North Florida Educational Institute. And Mance with six points at the line. As Grandview Prep has only been one of one at the line. North Florida Educational was eight of 10, 80%. There you go with the view behind the rim again of what the shooter sees as he hits the first. Well, what we see anyway, he, he sees, he sees a lot because of yeah. the depth perception there, you know, or because of the amount of space in behind the basket. There's a depth perception issue, you know, when these teams come in to shoot in this gym. And one thing I noticed during the girls tournament, saw a lot of girls teams getting to work out over at USF, uh, Florida State, coming from the panhandle. Well, Manson's one of two. AS7, it's 31-23, pride by eight. Stephen Bell to Virgil Davis, and Malik Carter. Carter now back out to Davis, one minute to go in the second quarter. Sammy Battle, now again to Stephen Bell. Bell, he'll look to drive, pull up, free throw line jumper, no good back rim. Miller with another rebound, he had it taken away. With the ball now on the floor, Miller throws it back out to Davis. Davis to Carter. He's blocked underneath the baseline, gets his own rebound. Shot it short. Loose ball. Glenton with a rebound. Nice defense that time by Bambi Prep. And then Frazier is going to get fouled. 
And yeah, he's kind of limping a little bit. Fouled right at midcourt. 34.2 seconds to go. Second foul, Malik Carter. And the 15th foul, North Florida Educational. By the way, Frazier, uh, Jawan Frazier, we had a couple of Frasers last week at the girls' tournament. This did happen Friday where uh, the player went down and I actually said, down goes Frazier. <laughs> Never thought that would happen. I didn't even mean it that way. I just said it and then thought about it later. There's a three again. Good. Rashawn Walsh from the left corner. He has five, it's an 11-point lead again, and we'll have an offensive foul. They're heading the other way, and that's on the Eagles. Well, that's a player control foul, so no free throws. Stephen Bell gets his first, 16 foul. 11-point lead as Grandview Prep has hit six threes. And now they have the ball, chance to extend the lead. 12 seconds to go, second quarter, now 10. Here's Kinnett. With Stephen Bell on it. Six seconds, now five. Mance back to Cadet. Now three, two. Cadet looks to drive. Free throw line jumper was partially blocked. And Miller will try one, and that is not even close. And that is the end of the first half. And a good first half for Grandview Prep. The pride of Boca Raton making their seventh consecutive appearance in the state semifinals lead. North Florida Educational Institute 34 to 23 in our 2A semifinal game. We are live at the Lakeland Center. Marty Palmer along with Mike Rideout. We'll take a break. We'll come back for the second half. This is the 2013 FHSAA Boys Basketball Finals from the Lakeland Center on the FHSA Network. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. <laughs>
Chris Paulding and the teams from the 2013 FHSAA Boys Basketball Finals. You can play with confidence on the court or on the field. When you play with Spalding, you play the best. Chris Lynch is going to the two of the hands after the game. It's the product that works, helping you to train better and perform better when you play your hardest. Peter, is it in you? to the Lakeland Center as we start the second half. And our score at halftime, it's 34-23. Grandview Prep Pride leading the North Florida Educational Institute Eagles. First to a semifinal of the game. Marty Palm and Mike right out back at the Lakeland Center. Here on the FHSA Network as we look at our first half stats. Well, uh, Grandview Prep, boy, 54% shooting. How about that? 13-24, at 6 of 12 from three-point range. And Ivan Kinnett hit one, but couple from Eric Mance, kind of spread them out too along the teams you mentioned, Mike Covenant, Grandview Prep, everyone shoots the three well. Well, and on the other hand, though, North Florida not shooting the basketball well. 28%, 7 of 25, including just 1 of 9 beyond the arc. Each team has a player in double figures. Miller with 12 for North Florida Educational and also 12 points for Ivan Kinnett. Grandview Prep in the final four for the seventh straight year, still looking for that first state title again in the second year for the North Florida Educational Institute and in their first Final Four. 28% shoes, you mentioned one of nine from three-point range, free throws, they were eight of 10. They out-rebounded Grandview Prep, 19-11, including nine to two of the offensive glass, but, and only four turnovers, only three for Grandview Prep, but again, the three-point shot, the difference. Six made for the Pride, only one for the Eagles. Yeah, they had three turnovers and seven assists. Nance missed that one with a tip in as Kinnett comes flying in and lays it in. Kinnett with 14, the leading scorer for Grandview Prep. Eric Nance with seven. Five for Sean Walsh, four for Wendell Glinton, three apiece for Juwan Frazier and Alex Jones at North Florida Educational Institute. Terrell Miller in double figures with 12. Malik Carter with six. Virgil Davis with three. Eric Cobb with two. 36-23, it's a 13-point lead. Largest lead was 14 for Grandview Prep in the first half. This is D'Angelo Stephen Bell. Miller driving in, misses the left-handed layup down the paint. Rebound though by Sammy Frazier. Sammy Battle, pardon me. Driving in, offensive foul as Carter drove down the middle of the lane. The charge is the call. That's his third. So Carter yeah. with three, Cobb with two for North Florida. Cadet the only player with two fouls for Grandview Prep. And Malik Carter picks up that third foul and he'll stay in the game. Again, not a very deep team are the Eagles. 
And by the way, if you look at some of their scores this year, the lowest point total they had all season was 48. A 54-48 loss to the Rock out of Gainesville. Only 23 points right now. They are really, and in the playoffs, their lowest score scoring game was 69. So they are uh, definitely being held under their average right now by this Grandview Prep team who's now running some clock. Kinnett to Mance. I don't know if you mentioned this earlier or not, but Grandview Prep, even though they've been here seven years in a row now and have not won, Coach Dawson does have a state championship, won it in 1996 at Miami Pace. Yeah, he's been coaching for a little while as they lost the ball there my, um, on the other side. Free throw line jumper is good for Stephen Bell. He was at Miami Pace, you're right, from 94 to 97. State champs in 93 and 96, and then Olympic Heights in Boca Raton from 2000 to 2003 before going to Grandview Prep in 2005. That was Stephen Bell's first basket of the game. 36-25 on the other side. That shot was blocked partially. Missed everything. Here comes Stephen Bell the other way. Into the corner. Battle for three. Well short at the front of the rim, but a rebound by Battle. Then he tried to get it to Cobb on the baseline. He threw it away. So, uh, Joe Dawson, you're right. Won that state title. That was his most wins at 31. They were 31 and 3, 3A state champions in 1996. How about some of his records at Grandview Prep? 25 and 6, 29 and 2, 25 and 6, 30 and 2, 29 and 1, 26 and 5, 29 and 3, 27 and 5, and 28, 28 and 2. Boy, most losses in a season was six. And since 2000, he's won 20 or more games 11 times. 246 and 32 at Grandview Prep as we have a timeout with 520 to go in the third quarter. It's 36-25, an 11 point lead for Grandview Prep over North Florida Education Institute. You know, even the two years that he did win 20 games at Olympic Heights in 2002 and 2001, 18 and 10, 17 and 11. He's had, a, I think, a winning season every, every year as a coach. Yep. Yeah. 46 and 32 at Grandview Prep. Wow, what a run. And he's uh, only 44. <laughs> he's got a ways to go, I'd say. And on the other side, we mentioned just starting his career. <laughs> it's Michael DeBose. Right. <laughs> 27 years old, his second year as a head coach. 37 and 16. And he's got North Florida Educational in the final four in his second year. That's an air ball by Walsh that time. And almost turned over. Miller will retrieve. And Miller tried to throw out of bounds. He did throw it off of Kinnett. Walsh airballed the three on the other side for Grandview Prep. Grandview Prep opened the game with a 19-9 run. Kinnett had eight points in the opening quarter. Mance on two shots beyond the arc at six. Steve Bell. able to maintain it. Now battle into Miller. Miller traveling the call. Saul Spates, one of our referees, if you remember heard the name Spates, you should know that. He is the uncle of another former Florida Gator, Maurice Spates, who's now playing in the NBA for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Recently was traded again. There was a <laughs> former Gator in the first game of the day, not in the game, but he coaches Wes Ganston, and a future Gator in the next game, and Chris Walker of Holmes County. Chris Walker. Now, enough about the Gators, for those of you who don't like the Gators. <laughs> oh, that, Joe Dawson wanted an intentional. Cobb finally came out and fouled Jones as Granby Prep ran the clock down for a while. Cobb gets his third. Not sure why he committed that foul, really. Second team foul in the second half on the Eagles, and they will bring in Isaiah Jones. Out comes Cobb with the three fouls. Kinnett, nice spin move, left hand to layup, no good. And loose ball out of bounds. We'll go back to North Florida Education. Maybe Prep has led most of this game. The last lead for North Florida was 6.38 to go in the first quarter. They had a three point lead. This is a game I feel like it's being played more at the pace Grandview Prep would like. Uh, they like to score too. They scored 49 in the regional final. They won 49-46, so they can slow it down as ball taken away inside by Kinnett. Four minutes left. Third quarter, Kinnett cross-court pass, and then it's taken away. Ahead to Carter. 
Carter drives, offensive oh. foul. Wow. That's his fourth foul. That's a close one. And again, what else can go either way is Carter got the basket to go, but the referee, John Sauer, says it's a charge. So you're right. That is four on Malik Carter. That's a huge foul with 3.49 to go third quarter, and they're going to have to check in Virgil Davis. So now Cobb out with three fouls, Carter out with four. We have a media timeout, 3.49 to go, third quarter. And Grandview Prep leads North Florida Educational Institute 36 to 25 in this 2A semifinal game. We are at the Lakeland Center. Marty Palmer along with Mike Rad out here on the FHSA network. Coming up, we talked about Orlando Christian Prep in our next game against Miami Westwood Christian. OCP, one of three defending state champions that will try to repeat the others, Miami Norland in Class 6A, and in Class 7A, nationally ranked Ely of Pompano Beach. Ely barely got here. It took two overtimes to beat Palm Beach Lakes. Wow. They'll, they'll match up with Bartow in 7A in one semifinal. Didn't realize that they had had that tough of a game to get here, but... So that game coming up. And Orlando Christian Prep. We mentioned their state champions. Now four out of five years under Reggie Cohn. The only time in that span they did not win a state title was in 2011. They lost in the final four. Underneath, Kinnett missed the shot, gets his own rebound, and a foul underneath. Basket doesn't count, but Kinnett's going to go to the line. Virgil Davis picks up his. Oh, Miller, sorry, gets yeah. his second, number one. Fourth team foul, none so far in Grandview Prep. 3.35 to go third quarter. It'll be Sean Walsh in. Each team with just one field goal, and we've played four and a half minutes. Uh, actually, the foul was going to go on Stephen Bell. All right, so his they corrected second. it. There's a shot no good from the corner by Kinnett, rebounded by Battle. Here comes Virgil Davis. Davis floater, it's short. Miller with a loose ball rebound. His putback is too strong. Loose ball on the floor again, one by Walsh. Ford Educational working inside, but they can't get the shots to go. And now wide open is Glenton who lays it in. Good vision up the floor by Kinnett to find a wide open underneath. Assists for Kinnett, basket for Wendell Glenton. He's got six, 38-25, back to a 13-point lead for Grandview Prep. In the corner for three is Battle, and he hits it. First basket for the freshman Sammy Battle. It's a three, only second three of the game for the Eagles, and they trail it again by 10, 38-28. Battle averages 9.3 a game. Kinnett across half court. Cobb. Stephen Bell almost taken away. Kinnett comes back over it. Puts a shot up over Stephen Bell. Doesn't go and Glenn went over the back on the rebound. That'll, That'll be, be his, his first. Second. second. Right. Cobb <laughs> averages 12.6 a game. And he only has two points today. Yeah, it's pretty much been Miller with 12. And then next is Carter with six. And that's about it. Davis with three. Battle with three. And Cobb with two. Stephen Bell also has two. So they have, they have four guys that average in double figures, and so far only one has scored double digits. That's Miller with 12. But Miller has yet to score here in this third quarter. Stephen Bell, ball knocked out of bounds by Grandview Prep. 2.32 to go, third quarter. <laughs> Battle will throw it deep. To Virgil Davis, back to Stephen Bell. Stephen Bell on the right wing. Battle back to Stephen Bell. Now inside to Miller. Miller back out, almost threw it away. Battle retrieves. Now across to Davis. Now again to Battle. Inside to Miller. Miller around a defender. Miller missed a short shot in low. Walsh with a rebound. Now Walsh in trouble. And he'll pass it out to Alex Jones. Miller. Not having a very good game from the floor. Now three for 12, and most of his shots inside. He's over three, three point range. He does have 10 rebounds. He's got a double double with 12 points. That is a three good left wing by Alex Jones. His second three of the game. Give them seven threes in the ball game, and they lead it by 13 again. 41-28 is Grandview Prep. 
135 now to go, third quarter. That was our first shot beyond the arc in the second half, but as you mentioned, seven threes after hitting six in the first half. Davis fakes to Miller. He'll try a three top of the key. Got it. Terrell Miller knocks down his first three of the game. And now North Florida back within 10, 41-31. And that's the third three of the game for the Eagles. We've hit two here in the third quarter. 15 for Miller. Here's Jalen Newsom trying to get the pass, although it's kicked away and intercepted. Now here comes Stephen Bell. Three on two, out to battle for three. No good, left side of the rim, rebounded by Newsom. Last minute of the third quarter, here comes Jalen Newsom. Two on, three on two. Now over to Walsh, right wing for three, nailed it. Raining threes now. Two threes for Walsh, he has eight. It's 44-31. I mean, we've had four threes in a matter of about three minutes. Granby Preps hit eight on the game. Every time North Florida hits one, Granby Prep answers. Oh, tried to do a no look pass down low. And it's tipped away and saved by Jones. Here comes Granby Prep. Mance across to Walsh. It's open again. Three right wing. No good back rim. And the rebound to Sammy Battle. 18 seconds to go here in the quarter. Here's Stephen Bell. Looks to drive. Drives in. Floater, no good, and then he reached in, and a late call, he did foul. Man, it's a little frustration for Stephen Bell, who missed the shot underneath, picks up his third foul with 11.7 to go. Yeah, these fouls are starting to mount up for the Eagles. As you mentioned, the third on Stephen Bell. Cobb with three, Carter with four. And a chance now for the Pride to play for the final shot of the quarter. 44-31, and they have the ball. Here's Newsom with five seconds, four. Into the corner again, open three. No good that time by Alex Jones, and then a full-court shot is short, and that is the end of the third quarter. Grandview Prep has outscored North Florida Education Institute in every quarter. It was 19-9 at the end of the first, and then they outscored them by a point for an 11-point lead in half, 34-23, and they outscored them 10-8. In the third, it's Granby Prep 44, North Florida Education Institute 31. We'll return for the fourth quarter of this 2A semifinal in just a moment here on the FHSA Network. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. Welcome back to the Lakeland Center. We start the fourth quarter of action here in this 2A semifinal. Marty Palmer and Mike Pratt out with you on the FHSAA Network. The Grandview Prep Pride continuing to lead the North Florida Educational Institute Eagles 44-31. We head to the fourth quarter. And Grandview Prep has led pretty much since the opening few minutes of this game. Well, they pulled off a little bit shooting after shooting 54% in the first half, 4-13 in the third quarter. But they are still shooting 45.9% for the game. Also only six turnovers in the game, really playing well. The Pride, nine for the Eagles. Nice pass from Battle. And laying it is Eric Cobb. That's only his second basket of the game. He has four. Terrell Miller with 15 leading the way for the Eagles. Also six from Lee Carter. Didn't score in the third quarter. Also has four fouls. And on the other side, four Grandview Prep. Ivan Connett with 14. Sean Walsh with eight, including two threes. Seven for Eric Mance, including two threes. Alex Jones has six, including two threes. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone has two threes. Wendell Clinton with six. And Jawan Frazier has a three-pointer as well. And Kinnett hit one in his 14. They are eight of 19 from three-point range are the pride through three quarters. So that's where the difference is. Uh, no basket. Called yeah, he took a step on the Eagles. Instead and of putting the, the ball on the floor. Really, everything else is pretty even. And actually, North Florida Educational was out rebounded Grandview by 11, including 12 to 4 in the offensive glass. But they are steal by Cobb, and he gets called for the foul. And that's his fourth. Cobb has four. Carter has four now. That is the 16th foul on North Florida Educational in the second half. So one more will put Granby Prep in the one-on-one. Only one foul on the Pride. This is Mance. 
Now to Canetti, drives it, lays it in the left hand. Nice Cordy, I know you referenced yeah. Stacy Cole earlier, did, but did you know that's him on the bench? I think that's Stacy Cole. Yeah, I believe that is Stacy Cole. You're right, he's helping out. <laughs> he knows a little bit about basketball. 16 for Canet, 46-33, fall away by Stephen Bell, no good. Canet ahead, and it's tipped and intercepted by Sammy Battle. And if you look at the end of the bench, the guy standing up, Stacy Poole, yep. the founder who founded this program in 2006. The school he did, yes, in the second year yeah. of the basketball program. Underneath, Miller is hit, he draws the foul, and he has a chance for a three-point play. 17 gives him game high honors with uh, Kinnett. Yeah, right, and it's interesting. It's only the second team foul in the second half. First personal on Sean Walsh for game to be prepped, but no one else helping him. He's got 17. The rest of the team has 18 right now as Jalen Newsom checks out. And back in is Blinton. Maybe prep will go bigger with. Clinton on Miller as Miller hits the free throw. He has 18. And timeout called by North Florida Educational Institute. 6.19 to go, fourth quarter. It continues to be a 10 point lead for Grandview Prep, 46 36. That just continues our Gator trend today. <laughs> yeah, right. Andrew Moten, who, by the way, <laughs> Andrew Moat is one of the most emotional coaches I've seen on the sideline here in a while. He's intense, and boy, he will let his players have it <laughs> if they, they are not doing their job. And by the way, Kenny Boyden, I hate to keep dwelling on Florida players, but oh, why not? he's uh, five <laughs> points away from tying Andrew Moat for so second on the all-time squad list probably in have Florida. Tonight, the Florida Gators as they travel to Tennessee. I wonder if Drew knows about that, probably. He's probably just busy worrying about a 1A state championship game right. yeah. for his team against Holmes County. He's worried about getting ready for Chris Walker. 6-9, 13 blocks today. A 20 triple points, double. 13 rebounds, triple-double for Chris Walker. And his coach afterward, Poe White, said, I didn't even think this was one of his better games. <laughs> Offensively, you can play better. Defensively, he was dominant, though, in that game. Panetta out to Mance for three. Right corner, hit it again. Three threes for Mance. He's in double figures with 10. And I tell you, the three-point shot, Bambi Prep continues to just extend that lead with three-pointers. That's their ninth of the game. They're up 13 again. Miller cross court to Carter, who's back in with four fouls. Back to Miller on the baseline. Miller spin move, pulls back, fall away is short. And Glint with a rebound, and taken away and then taken back. And we're going to get a foul. I think they're going to get Carter, and if so, that's his fit. Wow, you're right. You had to be careful there with a reach in, and that's exactly what happened. Carter just checked back in, and he fouls out with 5.45 to go in the fourth quarter. And with six points, and all six of those came in the second quarter. So Carter out of the game. Cobb has four fouls. He is back in as well. It's also the seventh team foul, so it's going to be a one and one for Eric Mance. And Mance today is one for two at the line. And first free throw for Mance is good. That matches the largest lead of the game for Grandview Prep, 50 to 36, a 14 point lead. And the second free throw coming up. And Mance hits it, he has 12 points. Largest lead not for the Pride. 15 points, 51-36. Stephen Bell, he has three fouls as well. Here's Miller at the free throw line. Back to Stephen Bell. That's a three from the corner, missed everything. Mance with a rebound. Been a tough day today for the Eagles at North Florida Educational Institute. Grandview Prep from the beginning has looked like the team that definitely knows how to play here. And they have hit the threes, and that's something we don't always see in the Lakeland Center as well. You know, it'll be the second consecutive game that the top-ranked team has fallen. That was Hawthorne in 1A this morning, losing by three to Holmes County. Kinnett, nice pass. Glint misses the layup underneath. Loose ball out of bounds. We'll go back to North Florida. And the, so Lake Highland Prep better beware tonight at 4A then. <laughs> that's the case. The number one team in 4A taking on Ransom Everglades. Still five minutes to go, though, for North Florida to make up the deficit down 15. 
is Cobb. He'll look to drive. Instead, he turned it over. Turnover number 11. Here's Manson around. That might be intentional. It is, and he draws the foul anyway, and he makes the shot, and that's an intentional foul. He grabbed his jersey, and still, Mance scored the basket. Basket counts. Fouls on number 11. 14 for Mance. Davis picks up the intentional foul as we'll have Mance at the line. 53-36 and kind of sense the frustration growing in the Eagles now. Mance scored seven in the first half. He's got seven in the quarter. And he's at the line to shoot. This will be for... Well, for the three-point play. So now they'll get the ball inbounds. Free throw no good, so it's at 14, and it will be pride ball. They're up 17 now with 4.55 left. Vance now three for four from the foul line. Uh, the referee's discussing, are we supposed to have the, well, okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure what we're doing here. Well, you don't get technical free throws if you make the basket, I guess. They just gave him the one free throw. You do get the ball, So though. you get the ball, right. So Walsh would mount. Uh oh, looking up, trying to get it up and into Jones. It was intercepted by Stephen Bell. Back to Miller. He'll try a three left wing. It's well short again. Rebounded by Mance. Well, Florida Educationalist has not been able to get consistent shooting today. Now shooting 29%. They're 3 of 14 from three point range. That's taken away. And Miller hurdles a player. Three on two. Miller will pull up. His floater no good. Gets his own rebound, knocked out of his hands. It'll stay with North Florida. I think Miller a little tentative that time. He didn't want to pick up a foul. Yeah, he only has one foul, but you're right. He didn't want to pick that up instead. 4.30 to go, fourth quarter. Oh, not delayed by Walsh and intercepted by Mance. Now Mance pulls it up, cross court to Walsh. Walsh, boy, that got kicked away in there. Look out. Kicking violation. No shot clock to reset. So. And a timeout taken by the Eagles. 4.21 to go. They trail it by 17, 53 to 36. Part as we look at their games that they've played this year. This is without question their lowest scoring affair. Yeah, we talked about it a little earlier. They scored 48 against the Rock in a loss. That was their closest. Hey, they played a lot of good teams early in the year, but you never know when you get to this point. And this is a very, very young team who's really never had to deal with it getting to this level. Back to action underneath Kinnett misses the shot. Driving in and scoring the basket Bell is Stephen Bell and timeout taken, 4.07 to go. Still 15 point lead, 53 38. Looking back on the all time records of the FHSAA, Grandview Prep lost in 2008. Terlander Christian Prep in the 1A final, 49-33. The 1A final 2009, they lost to Terlander Christian Prep, 46-43. And in 2011, they lost to Summit Christian of West Palm in the 1A final, 62-50. Now, if you remember, Orlando Christian Prep, Arlington Country Day had won a 2A championship for four or five years in a row from 05 to 09. They moved <laughs> to 1A in 2010. And then Grandview Prep had to play them, lost to the <laughs> Simmies. Then Orlando Christian Prep knocked off Arlington Country Day in their run of four out of five. And now Orlando Christian Prep is in 2A. And of course, Grandview Prep moved to 2A as well. So it's been a lot of bad luck. Away. The, it's been a bad, bad luck for the Pride. They keep getting stuck with either Arlington Country Day or Orlando Christian Prep. But boy, I tell you what, it looks like today Joe Dawson's team is going to yeah. move on to the championship game tomorrow. And, they may get another shot at Orlando Christian. Well, they've had you know pretty good balance today. Six players have scored. Cadet 
leading the way with 17, but a, a good day for the senior, Eric Mance. As I mentioned, 14.7 in the fourth quarter. Pass into Newsom. No hurry here for Glinton in the corner, and actually, will take a timeout with a pride. Another timeout. So it's <laughs> interesting, this close to the media timeout. Yeah, I was thinking that these too. These coaches are taking timeouts. Didn't like the play in the corner there. So I think sometimes you might forget as a coach they, that they have that because, you know, you don't always have that in basketball until you get to this point. You get that immediate timeout. So I don't know. Sometimes you might forget. North Florida has struggled for the game, shooting 29.5%. They are shooting just a little bit better in the second half. Six of 19 from the floor, 31.6%. Grandview Prep has been out-rebounded today. But they uh, have hit nine shots beyond the arc. Compared to just three for North Florida. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted a difference there, that's... Whoa, thrown in in the backcourt. That will be finally retrieved by Frazier. On a contact, then he went cross court to connect. They've outscored North Florida Educational by 18 in the three point line, and everything else has been pretty even. Only 29% shooting, like you said, for North Florida Educational, 46.5% for Randy Prep. Connect with 16 points, 11 rebounds, and four assists, leading Grand View Prep in all three categories. And Trevor Miller with Terrell Miller with 18 points, 12 rebounds, a double double as well for North Florida Educational. Now we're running a little bit of four corners here. Frazier in your half court, and Miller finally reaches in, and he has to commit the foul. That'll be his second. Yeah, you kind of have to. I mean, they'll keep doing that all day, and that's the 19th foul, so it'll be a one and one for Juwan Frazier, the freshman. So 324 left, one and one coming up for Frazier, ninth team foul. So one more, and it'll be a two foul bonus. Frazier shoots 69% on the year. This is the free throw. Maybe Prep didn't have anyone on the line that time. All back on defense, Stephen Bell, across for a three by Davis. That missed everything with the bottom of the backcourt. On the left wing, loose ball rebound to Frazier. And the story of the day, North Florida now three of 15 for three-point range. Kinnett drives, finger roll is good. 18 for Kinnett, timeout again. Take it. Pine Cranfield Prep. 3.05 to go, fourth quarter. They lead it by 17, 55, 38. Media. That's, That's 19. Media timeout, yeah, right. It takes us to our media timeout. 19 today for the senior, Ivan Kinnett. So. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Back to Lakeland, that was our media timeout. 3.05 to go, fourth quarter, 55-38. Kinnett with 18 points. Yeah, they've, they've got 19 up on the scoreboard, but yeah. he's got 18. Ivan Kinnett, we talked about him coming in. He'd be the player to watch, averaging 24 a game. He's getting close to that. The Grandview Prep has been in control of this game since the first quarter, really. North Florida Educational Institute has not led since early in the first, and it's been a double-digit lead most of the second half of Grandview Prep. Inside the free throw line, now into the corner. Miller drives the baseline. He had it taken away. And it's another steal. Now ball loose on the floor again. Fall four. Somehow Kinnett came up with it on his derriere. Now back out to Glinton. Glinton underneath. Missed the layup, but he's fouled, and he'll shoot two. North Florida Educational, a 13th turnover of the game. Battle picks up his first. That's 10 team fouls, so two free throws the rest of the way for Grandview Prep. Glinton going to shoot two. Don't forget our next game, which is scheduled to start at 4. May start just a few minutes late. OCP and Westwood Christian of Miami. Clinton hits the free throw. Grandview Prep, 5 for 8 in the line. North Florida Educational is 9 of 11. It's 56 to 38. 
That's their largest lead now. Now 19 for the Pride. Largest lead of the game for Grandview now 57-38. 2.40 left. And pass inside. Turn around, no good by Miller again, short of the glass. Miller has not had a good game shooting. As we'll have a foul. Miller today now from the floor is 5 of 18. 7 of 9 on the line, so that's where he's getting most of his 18 points. And that's now the second foul on Virgil Davis. Well, this is uh, an interesting season, I guess you could say. <laughs> The least for North Florida Educational Institute as the free throw is no good. They ended up, as we said earlier, 24 and 6 on the court, but their record was only 8 and 22. They had to be the sixth seed in their district tournament because of an ineligible player. As Kinnett hits the second, he has 19. So they had to battle back and win that district tournament. They did that fairly easily. The three in and out again, no good for Stephen Bell. That's been that kind of day for him as well. He's two for nine, now over three for three point range. Not only did they come back and have to win three district games as a six seed, they won by 59, 44, and 32 in those games. Three from the corner is good again for Sean Walsh. They're going to give him a two, actually, on that one. Well, he's reached double figures. Actually, that was a three, pardon me. Okay. No good on the other end for Stephen Bell, so Walsh does have 11. Tenth three of the game for Grand Prix Prep. They're 23, and they're cruising as Newsom drives all the way in. Nobody got in his way. His first basket of the game. And Grandview Prep can begin celebrating as they'll play in the 1A, 2A final tomorrow at 9 at 8.05. But for North Florida Educational Institute in their second year, they were dominant, but they ran into a more experienced team today. It's been a tough day throughout as their season is going to end. Their final record will be 8-23. and 23. On the court. It's going to be... 10 and 23, pardon me, they were 10 and 22 coming in. That foul is on Juwan Frazier, his second. Miller will shoot a couple. But the good news for them is they've got most of these guys back. <laughs> they will lose only D'Angelo Stephen Bell as Miller misses the free throw. A fairly dominant performance now. A lot of substitutions as North Florida Educational will bring in. Number 24, Austin Moore. Number three, Isaiah Jones. And for Grandview Prep, number 23, Evan Miller. Number 22, Jacob Schnur. Number 10, Davey Glenn. Number three, Chase Peters looks like he's about 10 years old. <laughs> on the court as he runs in front of us here. And number 12, Jake Westerfield. Younger guys getting in there a little bit. There's the steal and ahead and a layup no good. Miller <laughs> tips it in. Miller definitely looks like a man amongst boys out there right now, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. As he tips it in. And Peter's kind of backed away from him on that shot. I don't there. blame him. Hey, the ball's right behind us here. Oh. Sorry. 20 now for Miller. <laughs> here he is right in front of us. He is a freshman. Wow, I thought he was a seventh grader. One minute to he is play. listed as a freshman, 5'6". Miller is still in the game. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> nah, he blocked that shot pretty easily. <laughs> and turn around. He tries for three from Stephen Bell. He rolls that one in. The senior does get the three to go. He's got seven. Stephen Bell, 62. 62 to 43. Last 30 seconds of the game. There's a turnover. Grandview Prep will be 29 and 2 is the three again. Good by Stephen Bell. Gets himself into double figures there. Too little, too late. Eight and a quarter, 10 for the game. 62 47. Another steal. Stephen Bell's just trying to get as many points as he can right now as a senior. This is his last game, and he commits the, uh, the foul. Actually, they called it on uh, Grammy Prep, Schnurr. 17 seconds to go, 62-47. Kai Darling, number 21 in. And now I think they've got everyone in the game as Grammy Prep. I think North Florida has as well. Into Stephen Bell, he'll try another three. It's no good. 
Loose ball, rebound, put back, no good. Tip in again that time by Isaiah Jones off the miss from Austin Moore. And that, four seconds, three seconds to go. Driving, and that pass tipped, and that will be the last play of the game. As Florida education made it a little bit more interesting with the 11 last 11 points of the game. And that was all grand view prep this afternoon here at the Lakeland Center. They will move on to the state championship game tomorrow, the 8.05, the 2A final. This whatever game upcoming between Orlando Christian Prep and Miami Westwood Christian. Congratulations to North Florida Educational Institute on a great season. They made it to the final four in only their second year. But and if you prep moves on tomorrow to the 2A state championship game. Pretty dominant performance there for the Pride today. Yeah, had three players in double figures today. Kinnett had a big game for them. Mance had uh, a big game as well. They hit um, nine or uh, ten threes in the game. So here they go again, back to the state championship game. And we'll see if the seventh time, <laughs> if seven is a lucky number for Joe Dawson in the Grandview Prep Prime. Well, Mike, you got to get ready for another game. We got to get out of here. It's got another game coming up here in about, about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Second 2A semifinal. Our final this afternoon, 63-49. Grandview Prep defeats North Florida Educational Institute for Mike Radout. For our crew here in Lakeland, I'm Marty Palman saying so long. We'll talk to you again in just a few minutes for another 2A championship game. This is the 2013 FHSA Boys Basketball Finals for the Lakeland Center. A presentation of the FHSA Network in Play on Sports. So long for now from Lakeland.